Hello, this video is on a closure questions for chapter 4, 116 to 125. We're going to solve the system of equations shown at the right. We're going to describe what happened when we tried to solve the system, and then we'll graph the systems of equations, um, and then how does the graph of the system explain what happened with the equations. So let's go ahead and solve this by what looks to be substitution. We have y equals 3x plus 2. So we'll plug that in for y. That'll give us 6x minus 2 times the quantity 3x plus 2 is equal to 8. 6x minus 6x minus 4 equals 8, and it looks like we get negative 4 equals 8, which is not true. So negative 4 is not equal to 8, which means we have no solution. So this system has no values of x and y that satisfy both the equation both equations. So describe what uh, happened when you tried to solve the system. Well, everything canceled out and we were left with an untrue statement. So now in part B we want to graph the equations. How does the graph of the system explain what happened with the equations? Well now that we know there is no solution we should understand that we do get parallel lines here. The first equation y equals 3x plus 2 is already in slope intercept form so we can go ahead and graph that with a y intercept at 2 and a rise of 3 so rise over run 3 over 1 we can also go down 3 to the left 1 and graph that line and then on the second equation 6x minus 2y equals 8 I'm gonna take that one over here and rewrite that into slope intercept form Subtract the 6x, and then divide by negative 2, so y is equal to positive 3x minus 4. So at negative 4 is the y-intercept, and the slope is still 3, which for the lines to be parallel, the slopes have to be the same. And so we can see that... Since I don't have a straight edge, it doesn't look great, but you can see that they are parallel... So how does the graph of the system explain what happened with the equations? Well, there's no intersection because the lines are parallel. And so once again, we know that there's no solution because the lines are parallel and they do not intersect. On question 117, solve the system of the equations shown at the right. Describe what happened when you tried to solve the system. And then once again, we're going to graph and take a look at it. So this one, once again, is set up for substitution. We're going to take the 6x minus 3 and substitute it in for the y. 18x minus 3 times 6x minus 3 is equal to 9. So 18x minus 18x plus 9. And so the variable terms cancel out again, but this time we are left with a true statement. And so now we know not only um, are there solutions, but there's infinitely many solutions. So what did we notice? Um, when we tried to solve this system, this time we were left with a true statement. So once again, that means we have infinitely number of solutions. All right, so on B, we're going to go ahead and graph the systems. Once again, now that we have solved them, we should have an understanding that the equations of the lines are going to coincide or fall right on top of each other. So we'll start with graphing the y equals 6x minus 3. So y-intercept is at 0, negative 3 with a slope of 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So up 6 over 1 to the right or down 6 and 1 to the left. So it's a pretty steep line here. Not the best drawn, but there you go. And then on the second equation, actually the first one that's written, we have 18x minus 3y equals 9. So we'll subtract the 18x to the other side and then divide everything by negative 3. So y is equal to 6x minus 3. So we see that the slopes are the same. Uh, but now on this one, we also notice that the y-intercept is also the same. So we're going to have exactly the same line going through the same points. And therefore, these lines coincide. And so what does that mean? Um, if the two lines coincide, then all the points on the line are solutions to the system of equation. So there's another example of what can happen when you graph two lines. The third example is um, when you have two lines that intersect. So we've had a no solution when the lines are parallel, same slopes, different y-intercepts. 
different y-intercepts, and then uh, coinciding lines where they fall on top of each other, where you have the same slopes and the same y-intercepts, and this would be infinitely many solutions, and the solutions are not all solutions, it's all the points on the lines that are solutions. On question 118, solve these systems of equations using any method. So we're going to solve using any method. We'll start with question A. Um, A, we're going to use the equal value method. And the reason we're going to use that is because we have two equations that are written as y equals, so we can set those two things equal to each other. So we have 3x plus 7 is equal to negative 4x plus 21. I'm going to add 4x to both sides. 7x plus 7 is equal to 21. Subtract 7, and that's equal to 14. And then divide by 7, so x is equal to 2. We still need to find the y value, so we can go back up into one of the two equations, plug the x back in, and solve for y. We get 6 plus 7 is 13, so x is equal to 2 y is equal to 13. Um, and we could also check this by plugging these back into the original two equations as well. Part B, we have 3x minus y equals 17 and negative x plus y is equal to negative 7. So we have this one kind of set up for elimination. We have the variables all on one side and the constant on the other. And the other thing is when we add these two, the y's are already opposite of each other. So they eliminate, and I get 2x is equal to 10, and x is equal to 5. And then we can take that one once again, plug it back into either of the equations. I'll just plug it into the first one. We get 15 minus y equals 17. Subtract 15. Don't forget, it's still a negative y there. And then you can divide by negative 1 to get y equals negative 2. So x is 5 y is equal to negative 2. And then part C here. We have x equals, so this one, sorry, on this one we used elimination. And then on part C, we're going to use substitution because x is equal to 3y minus 5, so we can just substitute that into the second equation. So we have 2x so we're using substitution. So we have 2x plus, oh wait, I wrote it wrong on the thing over here. Let me fix that. So the 3y minus 5, because that's what x is equal to, gets substituted in for the x. I wrote the wrong thing over there. So let's make sure we get this right. 2 times 3y minus 5 plus... 12y is equal to negative 4. So we'll use the distributive property. Combine our like terms, and also I'm going to add 10 to the other side. So that'll be 6 plus 12 is 18y, and then negative 4 plus 10 is 6. Divide by 18. Now this is 6 eighteenths, but this can be reduced to 1 third, and you don't want to write it as a decimal because it'd be 0 0.3 repeating. So we're gonna leave it in that form. Then we're gonna go ahead and plug it back into the first equation. X is equal to three times one third minus five. That kind of worked out well because a third of three is one and one minus five is negative four. So our answer for the solution to these two lines would be negative four comma one third. And so there's an example where we're using equal value, elimination, and substitution. So on these first three questions, really showed you all the different possibilities um, in terms of the solutions that you can get and also in terms of the method that you could use. Question 119. Bob climbed down a ladder from his roof while Roy climbed up another ladder next to him. Each ladder had 30 rungs. Their friend Jill recorded the following information about Bob and Roy. Bob went down two rungs every second. Roy went up one rung every second. At some point, Bob and Roy were at the same height. Which rung were they on? So I think we could look at this one a lot of different ways. I think one way we could do it because of the information given. It looks like one that we could simply draw out 
and start at 30 rungs for Bob, and then Roy would be down at zero, and then see where they meet. I think this was intended for a system question, so that's the way I'm going to set it up and show you how it's done. But I would be fine either way on and how you would solve this question. So I'm going to let t equal the time that they're on the ladder, which would be in seconds. And then I'm going to let, um, I guess, r equal the, or let's let h. So we'll let h equal the height on the ladder. But they're not actually given their height, they're given the number of rungs, so that's the way we're going to measure it. So we have two scenarios. We have Bob, who is going down the ladder at two seconds, there are two rungs every second, so the height would be equal to negative 2 times the time, t, plus, but Bob is starting on the top of the ladder at 30 rungs. And then we have Roy, where the height is going to be equal to 1 times t, so he is going up 1 rung per second, but he's starting on the ground at 0. And so we can use the equal value method to solve this one. 2t or negative 2t plus 30 is equal to 1t plus 0. I'm going to add 2t to the other side and we get 30 is equal to 3t divide by 3 and we get t is equal to 10. So this is the time that they're going to be on the ladder before they, before they meet. Uh, the question says at what height or which rung um, are they going to be on? So now we need to plug that back in. I think the easy one would be to plug into Roy's. H is equal to 1 times T, which is 10 seconds. So therefore, the height is going to be at 10 rungs. So let's make sure we answer the question. Which rung were they on when they were at the same height? They were on the 10th rung um, when they were at the same height. So once again, Bob and Roy were on the 10th rung when they were at the same height. Question 120, solve for x. So these are all different types of equations that we should be able to solve for at this point. So we'll start with a and go through all of them. Uh, the first one is 6x minus 11 is equal to 4x plus 12. This is one where we have variables on both sides but no fractions. So we're going to get the variable term on the same side in this case by subtracting 4x. And then we're going to get the constant term on the other side by adding 11. So we get 2x is equal to 23, we divide and we get x equals 23 halves, so you could write that as a mixed number or a decimal as well. Alright, now we're going to go on to b. b we have 2 times the quantity 3x minus 5, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute that to be 6x minus 10 is equal to 6x minus 4. So this one adds the distributive property but still variables on both sides, so we're going to go ahead and subtract 6x to both sides. And on this one, what happens is the variable terms cancel out. We're left with a statement that is not true. So same with systems. That means we have no solution. We have no x value that will satisfy this equation. All right, on to C. This is where we have the generic rectangle possibly used, but I'm going to go ahead and use the distributive property. x times x is x squared x times a positive 4 is positive 4x, negative 3 times x is negative 3x, negative 3 times positive 4 is minus 12, and then on the other side we have x squared plus 4. So I'm going to subtract my x squared terms, so that will cancel the x squared terms. I'm also going to combine my 4x and negative 3x to 1x, so that's 1x minus 12 is equal to positive 4. I'm going to add 12 to the other side and get x equals 16. And so there's another version of how to solve an equation where we've added in the distributive property twice or the generic rectangle. Moving on to D, this one we have what we call a proportion. x divided by 25 is equal to 7 divided by 10. There's definitely a couple different ways that we can solve this. Um, I'll go ahead and do it in a couple steps here where I'm using inverse operations and getting rid of the division. So the first part I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 10, and that will cancel the 10 on the bottom here, but we have to do it to both sides. So we'll get a 10x over 25, because I had to multiply this one, 
by 10. And remember, it's 10 over 1 is equal to, and now this would be 70 over 10, which can reduce, but we'll just cancel out those 10s to get 7. All right, And we'll do it again, this time multiplying by 25, so we can cancel out the 25 on that side. So that'll leave us with 10x is equal to 25 times 7, which would be 175, divide by 10, and x is equal to 17.5. And like I said, there's different variations of how you could do that. Um, any of them would be fine. On to E. E we have similar to A, but the only difference on E is, is now we're dealing with fractions or rational numbers. So 2 thirds x plus 3 is equal to 1 fourth x minus 7. Um, we could get rid of the fraction. Let's go ahead and just deal with it. We're going to get the variable term on both sides by subtracting 1 fourth x. Now off to the side, I'm going to do 2 thirds minus 1 fourth. So 2 thirds, or you can just plug it in your calculator. Uh, I need a common denominator. So this one needs to be multiplied by 3. This one would need to be multiplied by 4. So that will give me 8 twelfths minus 3 twelfths, which is 5 twelfths. So that means I'll have 5 twelfths x plus 3 is equal to negative 7. Subtract 3 to both sides. You get minus 10. I'm going to multiply by 12. And you could multiply by the reciprocal. I'm just going to do it in two steps. That will give me negative 120. And then divide all of that by 5. And that goes in... Uh, Let's see, 20, yeah, 24 times looks like. So x is equal to negative 24. And then the last one is f, and similar as well. We got, we have rational numbers here. So x plus x over 3 is equal to 4. Could multiply everything through by 3, but to get rid of them, I'm just going to go ahead and add. This is 1x plus one-third x. So one x plus one-third, I'm going to leave it as an improper. Instead of writing it as one and one-third, I'm going to do four-thirds x is equal to four. And then I'll multiply. This one I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal so you can see both ways. This will do it in one step instead of two. So three-fourths times four-thirds, when you multiply by the reciprocal, you get one. So x is equal to, and then on this one you get either um, four-thirds 4 over 1 times 3 fourths, the fourths can cancel, or you can get 12 over 4 to get 3 either way. And so x is equal to 3. So there's all the kind of different versions of solving the equations we've done so far. Question 121, solve the equations in part A and B for y, then state the slope and y-intercept of each equation in part C. So we have two equations, we're going to solve them, and then we're going to state the slope and y-intercept for each of these equations. So let's go ahead and start with question A, negative 6x minus 2y equals 8. And if we're going to solve for y, we need to add the 6x to the other side. Don't forget the negative 2y. And since we are writing them in slope-intercept form, because we want to identify the slope and the y-intercept, let's go ahead and put the x first, divide everything through by negative 2, and we get y equals negative 3x minus 4. And so for part C, for each of the two solved equations, find the y-intercept and slope. So on this one, we have the slope, or the rate of change, is negative 3. And then the y-intercept is 0, negative 4. So this is part C there. And for part B, we have 2x squared plus 2y equals 4x plus 2x squared minus 7. Now normally, when you're dealing with x squared, you're not going to find a slope and a y-intercept. But what you'll notice when you start to solve for y, you'll subtract the 2x squared, and it eliminates both of them or cancels them to 0. So that gives us 2y equals 4x minus 7, and then we can divide everything through by 2. So y is equal to 2x minus 3.5. So on part c, the slope is 2, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 
3.5. Fix my 3. And so I think that's it for that question. Question 122. Leo solved a system of equation by graphing, and the graph is shown at the right. Estimate the solution from the graph. So let's start there. So if we're going to estimate it, it's going to be where it intersects right here. Um, so they're going up by increments of 1. So it's kind of in between 1 and 2. Uh, looks a little bit uh, closer to the 1. And then same thing on here. It's in between 2 and 3, but a little bit closer to the, to the 2. So my guess is going to be, I don't know, let's say 1.25. And for the 2, we'll do 2.25. And this is just an estimate because it doesn't intersect nicely. B says, what is the equation for each of the lines in the system? So let's go ahead and find those. Now we need to know what the slope and the y-intercept is. So for this equation right here, it looks like the y-intercept would be 0, 1 with a slope of, um, looks like it goes up 1 over 1 each time. So we're going to say a slope of 1, which means that equation and we'll call this um, equation a sub 1. So a sub 1 is going to be y equals 1x plus 1. And then we'll look at the other equation here. This one has a y-intercept at 0, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, no, 5, 0, 5. And its slope is going, looks like down 2 over 1. Check it a couple times and it does look correct. So this one has a slope of negative 2. And we'll call this a sub 2. So on the second equation I have, I have y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. Uh, so that is the equation for each of the lines. And then now we're going to solve it algebraically. And then how accurate was our estimation. So on part C, we're going to solve, we'll use the equal value method. So 1x plus 1 is equal to negative 2x plus 5. Add the 2x to both sides. 3x plus 1 equals 5. Subtract the 1. 3x is equal to 4. Divide by 3. x is equal to 4 thirds or 1 and one-third. Right. Now we need to solve the y value, so I'll go back to the first equation. y is equal to 1x, or x, so that'll just be 4 thirds plus 1, and 4 thirds plus 1 would be 7 thirds, or 2 and one-third. So the exact solution x is 4 thirds and y is 7 thirds, or you can use the mixed numbers. Um, how accurate was our estimation? Well, my estimation, I said 1.25 and it's 1.3 repeating, and I said 2.25 and it's 2.3 repeating. So it was, it was close, um, but that's why when you're using a graph, you can't always look to see exactly where the point of intersection is located. So it's important that we know how to solve systems algebraically as well. Question 123. As treasurer of his school, FFA Club, Kenny wants to buy gifts for all 18 members. He can buy t-shirts for $9 and sweatshirts for $15. The club has only $180 to spend. If Kenny wants to spend all of the club's money, how many of each type of gift can he buy? Write a system of equations representing this problem. Solve your system of equations and figure out how many of each type of gift Kenny should buy. So it's telling us that we need to write a system of equations, so that means we need to do our let statements. So we need to let, what is it that we do not know? Well, what's the question to ask at the end? If Kenny wants to spend all the club's money, how many of each type of gift can he buy? Well, his gifts are um, t-shirts and sweatshirts. So that's what we don't know. We don't know how many of each. So let's let t equal the number of t-shirts. And we'll let, I'm not going to use S, I don't like that variable, so we'll let, um, um, what's another variable, B, I'm not sure why, but let B equal the number of sweatshirts. Alright, 
so we know that uh, Kenny wants to buy gifts for all 18 members. So if he wants uh, one gift per member, then we know one of our equation is the number of t-shirts plus the number of sweatshirts should be 18. We also know how much they cost. So it's $9 a t-shirt, so 9 times t, plus $15 for a sweatshirt, so 9 times, or sorry, 15 times b. And that's going to equal $180 because he wants to use all of the money. Um, and he wants to spend, right here it says, spend all of the club's money. So there's our system of equation. Um, so this is part A. And then part B is to solve the system. Uh, this one you could solve either way. I think substitution or elimination would be fine. You could easily solve for either one of the two variables in the first equation without getting fractions. Uh, we can also set it up for elimination, um, where the variables are all on the same side. So I'll go ahead and do elimination. I'll multiply the second equation by negative 9. And anytime I use elimination, I always separate my two equations each time, even if I'm only rewriting one of them. So there's the first equation again. And my second equation is negative 9t minus 9b is equal to... Uh, what's that? That's 90 and 72, so negative 162. And then when I add these up, I get 16. Oh, that's supposed to be, sorry, negative 9b. That's 6b is equal to 18, where b is equal to 3. So it looks like there will be three sweatshirts that need to be bought. And then let's go ahead and plug this back into... Um, I'd say the easier of the two equations, which would be t plus b is equal to 18. So that if there's a total of 18 gifts, then t would be equal to 15. So to make sure we answer the question, um, we solve the system, figure out how many of, e of each type of gift Kenny should buy. So we do have to answer both of them, that Kenny can buy 15 t-shirts and 3 sweatshirts. Question 124. Simplify each expression to 1 without 0 negative exponents, and then in Part D, make sure your answer is in scientific notation. So in Part A, we have 3 raised to the negative 2, and remember, when we have negative exponents, we can think of those as reciprocals, so that would be 1 over 3 to the positive 2, which is 1 ninth. On B, we have just variables, so it's a to the third, b to the second, and then b to the negative 1 is being raised to the third power. Now, if you remember your your laws of exponents or your rules here, you can take negative 1 and multiply it by um, 3 to get b to the negative third. But you can also expand that out three times, and you can also see that when you add them up, you get negative 3. But now we have two b values, so we do have to add the exponents. So that's 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2. And we have to continue because we can't have any negative exponents when we're done. So b to the negative 2 needs to be moved to the bottom become b to the positive 2. Alright. Um, Alright, I just noticed I made a mistake here. This was b to the second up here and I wrote 1. So then it would be b to the... Let me fix this. Sorry about that. Let me go back here. And so it's a to the third, b to the second, and then b to the negative third. So now when you add them up, you get b to the negative one. So it's a to the third over b to the first power. So I just wrote the wrong thing down. Sorry about that. And then on c, now you have division instead of multiplication. So you have x to the second, y to the third, divided by x to the second, y to the negative one. And so the rule is that we can subtract the exponents, so 2 minus 2 for your uh, base of x, and then your y, it's 3 minus, and be careful, it's 3 minus a negative 1. So that would be equal to x to the 0 power, and then y to the 4th. And remember, anything raised to the 0 power is 1, so this is 1 times y to the 4th, or just y to the 4th power. And then the last one scientific notation. You divide each of these, and then remember when you're dividing exponents, you subtract. So 
So this is 4 times 10 to the 5th divided by 8 times 10 to the 7th. So 4 divided by 8 is 0 0.5 times 10 to the 5th divided by 10 to the 7th is 10 to the negative second. So with scientific notation, we don't care about the negative exponents, but we do have to make sure that our number is between 1 and 10. And this one's 0 0.5, so we need to move the decimal point over. And once we move it over, now that it's 5, or 5.0 times 10 to the... What do we need to do here? Well, since it was a smaller number, uh, we need to subtract 1 from the negative 2 to get a negative 3. So 5.0 times 10 to the negative third. All right, in the last question, uh, question 125, rewrite each expression below as a product and as a sum. So this gets back to our distributive property in generic rectangles. And so on first one, part A, is our generic rectangles. I'm going to go ahead and use the distributive property. 2x times x is 2x squared. And don't forget, you can use the generic rectangle on this as well. This will be minus 5x. 7x, or 7 times 2x is 14x. And then 7 times negative 5 is negative 35. Make sure you combine your like terms. 2x squared plus 9x minus 35. So we are going to rewrite each expression below as a product and as a sum. So I want to make sure that this is equal to the original x plus 7 times 2x minus 5. So the part that I solved for was the um, sum, and then what was given was the dimensions or the product. Part B, we have just one term being multiplied by 2, so we can still use the distributive property. 5x times y is 5xy, and 5x times negative 7 is negative 35x. And once again, this is equivalent to the product, which was what was given in the problem. So we got 5x minus y minus 35x is equal to 5x times the quantity y minus 7. And then on part C, now this one I might go ahead and show you the generic rectangle for. It is a little bit larger, so maybe a little bit easier to see. On top, we're going to have an x squared, a negative 2x, and a positive 11. And then on the side, we have a 3x and then a minus 7. And so we're just going to find the area of each individual. So this would be, uh, first box on the top left would be 3x times x squared would be 3x cubed. 3x times negative 2 would be negative 6x squared, and then 3x times 11 is 33x. Now negative 7 is being multiplied by all those, so it would be negative 7x squared. Negative 7 times negative 2x is positive 14x. Negative 7 times 11 is negative 77. So we'll have 3x minus 7 times x squared minus 2x plus 11 is equal to, now we're going to make sure we add these and combine them at the same time. So I have x squared right here, and then I also have x's along that diagonal. So we're going to combine them as we write them down. So we're going to start with the highest exponent, which is 3x cubed, negative 7x squared minus 16x squared is minus 13x squared. 14 and 33x, 14x and 33x is 47x, so that's plus 47x, and then minus 77 on the bottom there. So that's what it would look like with the generic rectangle. If you did choose to use the distributive property, you're just going to have to do it six times. So 3x would get distributed one, two, three times, and negative 7 gets distributed one, two, and three times as well. So you just have six terms in line and then you would combine those. So that's it for the closure question.